Welcome to a very strange edition of The End of Everything. Isn't that just appalling? This morning, all matter from our planet suddenly changed into a very different kind of stuff. The changes are quite, were quite radical. For one thing, our bodies have just ceased to exist. This time, the trouble didn't come from a colossal piece of rock slamming into our planet or from some divinity deciding to end our world. No, the danger was so small we didn't even see it coming. We're talking about quarks here. The tiny building blocks that make up protons and neutrons. Quarks come in different flavors. There's up quarks and down quarks and strange quarks. The nuclei of the atoms are made of just the right mix of the right quarks. Ul matter ultimately is made up of up and down quarks. But other mixtures are possible too. In the first moments after the Big Bang, there was also stuff made of up, down, and strange quarks. It was completely different kind of st it was a completely different kind of stuff than what we're used to. Appropriately, scientists just called it strange matter. But as the universe expanded, strange matter suddenly vanished. Although some chunks of strange matter, called S curves, may still be out there somewhere. One thing's for sure, though. No human has ever actually spotted a single speck of strange matter. Oh, but that can change. In recent years, quantum physics physicists have tried hard to imitate the earliest moments of the universe. That sounds more difficult than it is. The only thing you have to do, basically, is to slam two particles at tremendous speeds head-on into each other. And that's exactly what they did. And what they do at huge particle accelerators, such as those at CERN in Geneva, or the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider, RHIC, at the Brookhaven National Laboratory in New York. You already feel what showed up this morning. Strange matter, my friend. Lots of it. In a particle accelerator experiment, a tiny bit of strange matter suddenly popped into existence. Against all expectations, it had a negative charge. And in the next moment, it, it engaged into a chain reaction theoretical physicists called ice nine type transition sure the lump of strange matter that showed up was incredibly small but that changed within moments as the strange lit began gobbling up all the positively charged atomic nuclei that it encountered forming more strange matter the blob grew and grew eating the accelerator the building around it the town around the building and it turned everything it encountered into more atom eating strange matter it was Ice-9 at its best. Within seconds, our entire planet, including everything on it, became a strange matter planet. Does that hurt matter? Oh man, you just don't want to know. All conventional atoms ceased to exist this morning. And in case you forgot, everything we know of, including us, is made of atoms. What's worse, strange matter particles are equally charged making them want to go away from each other as far as possible. Like, like the equally charged sides of a magnet. Simply put, all matter on the planet has fallen apart this morning. The world went boom, or there was no sound. Well, all right, I'll admit it. Of course, nothing really happened today. I wouldn't be telling you this if it had, but could it happen tomorrow, or next week, or next year? Here's some reassurance. Strange matter is unstable. It simply wouldn't have time to consume nearby atoms. What's more, strange matter probably has a positive charge, and positively charged strangelets aren't very dangerous. They would have an appetite for electrons, sure, but this wouldn't bring about any chain reaction. The strangelet would simply snatch away a few electrons from surrounding atoms, and that would be it. Would probably be it. Perhaps. Actually, no one really knows for sure. As I already mentioned, no human being has ever studied a chunk of strangeness. And in scientific laboratory, or, and scientific history has made one thing clear. It, could, it should be that reality often defies theory. As the Russian theorist Lev Landu once put it, cosmologists are often wrong, but never in doubt. Strange, don't you think?